It can be really hard to be consistent with good diet, workout, and a good sleep routine. It takes a lot of discipline. But did you know that one of those actually contributes to the others? It's true. Studies show that if you sleep well and you do it consistently, you're more likely to be consistent with your diet and your workouts. In other words, do that. Be consistent with your sleep. It makes everything else much easier. By the way, there's an inverse relationship. If your sleep is poor, you're far more likely to eat poorly and far more likely to skip workouts or not work out at all. This uh, this is cool because it's one of those things that you could do and it just makes everything else much easier. Or you cannot do it and it makes everything else much harder. This was actually one of the last things that I actually connected. In fact, it was uh, not that long ago. Um, we were already doing this podcast when I really had made that connection of the the appetite cravings that I would have uh, after a restless night. And I don't remember if that was back when we interviewed somebody who had wrote the sleep book or or what was going on with us in the business. But I do remember like finally making that connection like, oh shit, all these days that I have these weird cravings for junk food or for ice cream or anything are, processed. Yeah, we're also connected to a poor nights of sleep and then realizing, wow, the days that I get the really good night's rest and I wake up without an alarm clock and I feel refreshed to start my day, I tend to have an easier time with making good food choices. And it's wild how how closely those are connected. And I feel like if I was this late to the party, I got to think that most of my clients and average person doesn't make this connection too often. Yeah, it's 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 cool. So there's a study that I'm pulling up uh, and it was the American Heart Association. And the summary is people who had greater scores for sleep health. So that was based on regularity, satisfaction, alert, alertness, timing, efficacy, or excuse me, efficiency and duration during a 12 month weight loss program were far more likely to follow the caloric intake and exercise components of the program compared to peers who scored lower for sleep health. It has such a profound effect on behaviors that, mm -hmm. I mean, look, at the end of the day, the biggest challenge with like just trying to eat right is your own cravings, your own desires, your own lack of discipline or, you know, your inability to stick to something, right? Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. And they're finding in these studies, and this is, again, we've observed this as trainers, that when people get good sleep consistently, it's a lot easier. It's yeah. just a lot easier. And then, of course, the opposite. It's way harder. It's just, I mean, it kind of feels a lot more like you're just more reactive. Like the whole rest of the day, I'm just kind of passively reacting to everything that's being presented to me versus like staying ahead of it and having the energy and the cognitive awareness to kind of pursue better behavioral options. It's like I'm almost coasting my way through it. And then like any option that's available, I'm going to grab for that as opposed to the opposite. It's funny how much we get hung up on macros and, yeah. and, and counting that type of stuff. When <laughs> I think like if that was, if that was like the missing link for people being successful, then people would be so oblivious to putting three different plates up and being, which one's the better one or which one, like, I don't know a client one that I, if I showed them a you know, highly processed, highly saturated fat, low protein, poor, you know, meal plate or food plate of food next to a really healthy whole food natural balance and go which one's which one's a better choice for yeah, you? Yeah, they'll know which one. Yeah, ninety nine point nine percent of all of them will know right away which one that it is. So it's not a, a matter of the, the clients not knowing, like, but it's the it's the behaviors and resisting that those temptations and and learning how other things affect your choices. That really, I think, learning how to get a hold of that really makes that choice much simpler. It crushes your willpower. You know, when they, when, when, uh, like foreign countries capture spies or soldiers, and they want to like break them, they want to yeah. get them to give up the secrets. That's the go-to. The one of the go-tos is sleep deprivation because it breaks your will. You're far more likely to be impulsive, far more likely to give up the secrets. Even a trained expert, uh, you can break them with sleep deprivation. So now it's an extreme case, but if you're the average person, you're like, man, this is really tough. You know, eating right is really tough. Uh, and you know, exercising consistently, it's really, really hard for me. And I know I'm supposed to get good sleep. Like what do I focus on first? Sleep, because well, the sleep is gonna make everything else much easier. And it's a hard one, it's deceptive too, because I think um, people's perception of good sleep is completely different than uh, actually getting like good quality sleep, which then restores you. And it, it, it helps uh, give you all those like benefits that you'd have like um, throughout the day versus like, uh, I just think uh, 
people aren't aware that just closing your eyes and, and, and trying to get like a certain block, like, let's say that's like seven to eight hours. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah, well I got it. But did you like, did you interrupt, get interrupted all night? Yeah. Like, did you ever get into real REM sleep? I don't know. Well, this is also why I think, um, glucose monitors are so valuable because it, be, you become more aware of how the food choices that you make affect like your blood sugar your insulin spikes and that then how that affects the choices and behaviors one of the most common things that affects your your ability to process glucose or these spikes is lack of sleep yeah when they when they do these glucose so at nutrisense <coughs> that's a partner we work with they use continual glucose monitors that monitor your glucose your blood sugar in real time and then they have actual nutrition experts that work with you and they'll tell you the top way reasons that people get these spikes and these crazy drops in blood sugar. One of them has nothing to do with the food that they eat. It's lack of sleep or mm -hmm. poor sleep. Someone has poor sleep and then they see these numbers go all over the place. And then that influences your behaviors, improve, increases your cravings, decreases your willpower. They could see it with data. And again, when we had, what was her name? We had her on the show. Uh, was it Kara? We had her on the show, Garrett. representative from NutriSense, and she's like, oh, yeah, like lack of sleep, like I'll see it. I could tell. I could look at somebody's numbers on their CGM, and I'll know, like, did you eat Pop-Tarts, right, you know, at this time, or was it because you had bad sleep? Because it was one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, and, you know, I, this took me so long uh, to to figure out as a, as a trainer, so long. But I remember I would, when I finally did, uh, people would see, like, I don't know, eight pound weight loss. And I didn't tell them to change anything. Just yeah. let's just get you to bed at the same time every night, wake up at the same time every morning, do a sleep routine, give you, you know, eight and a half hour, nine hour block. Cause I know it's going to take you 30 minutes to fall asleep. Yeah. Let's do that. And then when they would do it consistently, the weight would just fall off and they would say, wow, I didn't know that I burned fat when I slept and stuff like that. Like, that's not really what's extreme happening. example. I mean, yeah. I've, I was training this lady for years and, um, Really, I, I just, it was so difficult because it was like, there's got to be something here that we're not doing, you know, like, what is the key? Uh, it was so frustrating because like the training was consistent, the nutrition was all dialed in, like everything we were doing, we could possibly do like uh, to, to kind of create this like healthy lifestyle. Uh, but the sleep just wasn't there. And and it's because it, it just kept getting interrupted with meetings and things internationally at like weird hours in the middle of the night. And so there's just stress level and there's this yeah. like interruption of, of recovery there that when it was very apparent that like the sleep was a massive component to that was when she was like, had a month where she just went on a retreat, didn't do any work, was completely like rested and, and restored and lost 10 pounds just like that. <laughs> Is that crazy? Yeah. It's well, this so is crazy. this is also why I don't like the uh, again the, the calories in calories out type of argument is like the end all be all because I've had situations just like that, Justin, where I feel like I'm doing everything right as a coach and a trainer, and I and you assume that your client <laughs> must be lying to you because yeah. you're thinking from that perspective of like does it make sense? I've got her on a calorie restricted diet. She's doing this. She's doing that. She's following these things, and then you start to dive into that piece, and it's like oh shit, like you're not sleeping. You got your jet lag because you're flying all over the place. It's just like and not realizing like how stressed your body is from that and that it, it your metabolism doesn't work with you when that case is it's in survival mode and it feels like it's being attacked from all angles and then i'm beating you up in the gym thinking i need to work you harder yeah. and that's the missing piece to it and all i'm doing is making the situation even worse there's a lot of people that find themselves in this trap and have no idea and that's why a lot of them say fuck it i don't want to do it anymore i give up because i'm doing all this hard ass work stressing myself out not getting good sleep too and i'm not seeing the results from it. fuck it i'd rather eat the bad food yeah and be yeah. a little fatter well it's not intuitive right like sleep like i'm not burning calories like i'm not exercising <laughs> yeah, like right. what does that have to do with anything look i'll say this right now everybody watching if you're new to this and you want to get started on this let's let's say this fat loss journey just fix your sleep and don't worry about anything else. Just do your normal life. Just fix your sleep for three months. You'll lose weight just by doing that alone. That's mm -hmm. that's how impactful it is. Um, and again, if you, like I said, our, our partners at NutriSense, they back this up with people's glucose numbers and behaviors and all that stuff. So oh, that's do super insane. Pretty, cool. pretty crazy. Do you guys think that the reason why some of this stuff is not communicated is it, it, it devalues us? Like as coaches and trainers, like when you, you don't think, need me when you, exactly when you think like like when you if I said like give me like the five <laughs> you're like, a sleep trainer you lay in bed with them like, I mean yeah head. give me the give me like the five <laughs> big rocks like you want to like completely <sighs> shift and alter somebody's health and fitness journey for the rest of their life 
and what are like those five big rocks? And it's like the the dumbest, simple things like go to bed, you know, <laughs> yeah. get a full nice rest, yeah. drink water, yeah. walk more, walk after your meals, lift yeah. lift some heavy weights a few times get some a week. Sun. Like yeah, Go like sleep. it's there. It's not really overly complicated. Eat whole foods. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it, I'm not. And there's no tracking, measuring, weighing there, or you know, progressive overload. I'm not saying any of that shit right now. It's like literally, yeah. Do all these super basic things. Do them really well and really consistently, and watch how much that completely alters your life from a fat loss perspective, from a muscle building That's perspective, everything. from a yeah everything, well being, everything. And it's like. You don't really need me for that. You know what I'm saying? Totally. <laughs> it's like, it's there it is right there, you know? Yeah, so totally. Again, I think that's why we don't, I don't think that's why it's not popular enough. You know? yeah. yeah. Let's see. Like I said, there's, there's a new category of trainers, sleep trainers. Yeah. They stay in your room and sing a lullaby just, or something. Yeah. Watching. Yeah. Anyway. Taking notes. All right. Today's giveaway, the RGB bundle. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale on some workout programs. MAPS Cardio is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle of Workout Programs is 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle of Workout Programs is also 50% off. If you're interested in any of those, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. See, I got to tell you guys, uh, uh, my two-year-old, is he's, he's getting to two, two and a half now. He's at the age now. Actually, I told you this, Adam, earlier, and you said that you remember when Max started doing this. So we're putting him to bed last night and he's got this weird toy. It's like this cactus that talks back at you and it, it copies your voice. But then there's this function on it where it plays music. And he's like, uh, he, at first he says, don't look at me to his mom. And then don't look at me to me. I'm like, okay, whatever. <coughs> so we're like, all right, we're going to look uh, at the wall. Right. But I'm, I can kind of see what he's doing. And he turns the music on and he looks at himself in the mirror and he starts like dancing, dude. He's like jamming and we're, I am cracking up because I can see what he's doing. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'll look at him and be like, don't look at me. He'll stop and then he'll change the song. And he's like watching himself in the mirror while he's dancing. Yes. It's the funniest thing ever, dude. I tried recording him, but every time I picked my phone up, he yelled at me. So I'm like, all right, I'll put this down. <laughs> Max just came out of that phase of the, and he's still, depending on his mood, I get him in. He's now he's like 50 50. Sometimes he's a ham. Like he, yesterday mm -hmm. was uh, his first day of the new school and, Katrina asked him because she knows that he can get like that if like she pulls the camera out. No, he'll put his hand yeah. up. No, no picture, and then he'll do something like that. And then some like now he's at this phase where sometimes he'll do that, or sometimes he'll be like this, where she's like, "Can I take a picture of you with your backpack?" Oh, yeah. right? And he goes, uh, "Yeah." Then she goes, he what, "Yeah." He goes, "What side do you want?" <laughs> hey, she's like, it's so cute because the backpack is. Oh, I know. It's like it's <laughs> it's half of his body is is the backpack and stuff. So. What are they carrying in that backpack? It's know. so it's, big. Yeah. You know? he, he, well, I think she lets him lug his toys around and stuff like that so, so he loves it he does it even in the house right now right so he'll carry his backpack around and his toys are yeah right anytime there. we get aurelius something like we got him a, a camelback boom where's it around the house or if we get him flip-flops where he's got like whatever he got this new thing you know new hat i'm gonna wear it every day now oh, yeah. i'm gonna go to bed with my hat on or whatever yeah he's at a he's at a, a, a pretty funny and, and hilarious yeah. face you know now. what you know what though i had this thought too where because we didn't experience this our parents did not have the ability to record us 24 7 i know mm -hmm. they didn't right it was always special events, go get the camera, record this, record that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, because my son called me out, he's like, don't record me. And he got mad at me. And then Jessica looks at me. She's like, let's just be present. And I'm like, you know what? I wonder, like, it made me think how much of his life and all these things I'm experiencing through the camera on my phone. Yeah. Rather than actually I, being I, there. I, you know? I wrestle with that a lot. Right. And actually if, if it, I, I get upset at Katrina sometimes, so it's not fair. Right. It's like, I'm the, I'm the one who does really good about capturing the photos, capturing the videos. She's like, if it, we, if it wasn't for me doing that, we probably have none of my son. I know pictures of her and I, uh, so I definitely have the, the tomboy wife when it comes to that. So I've assumed that role in our relationship. And so there's sometimes where I get frustrated. Like I, I just want to enjoy this moment. Can you capture it for oh, us? Yeah. So I can go back and, and reflect on it because I'm kind of the one who's always doing that. Yeah. And so then I have these moments where I'm like, oh, I just I'm I don't want my phone around. I'm just I'm gonna be in the moment and do that. So I try and have balance in that. But then I also think it's such a man, one of my favorite things to do, and I do this already with him. He's only fucking four, and I do this where I'll I'll lay in bed and I'll go through Bro. I, every night we do that. I love that. Every night I we love go that. through that. Yeah. I love that. I and Katrina and I will go through it and like, oh, you remember this? Remember uh -huh. when he was doing this and doing that? I, I, and I don't have that. Like there, I don't have nothing of me like that where I could go back and see this timeline of growing up. And I, I got to think that 
that's going to be really cool for him when he's a certain age to be able to look back and see his dad and his mom interacting with him yeah. and him with his friends when he's little. And like, so I don't know, there's like a part of like, you want to be fully present and, and, and you don't want to have to have this stupid phone and like get them so comfortable with like, there's always this. Yeah. yeah. But then there's that part too. Like, man, that's such a cool technology that you have this so you can reflect. I know I, I struggle with it too. Cause the, the, the positive is, uh, is, is being in the, in the moment and not interrupting whatever they're doing. Cause yeah. even when you pull the camera out, if they notice it and they do notice it, it's not like they don't notice that you're doing it, uh, that it, probably changes their behavior and their experience. It has to, right? It does. So that, well, there's, okay. So you saw the one, the last, the, there are like two posts to go on my son's page, right? I know you guys have access to that. The, the public doesn't. I, I, I caught the doctor scene. So I, I prop that cause he was already doing something like hilarious. Oh, so you do like a hidden camera. Yeah. So oh. he, and, and I sent him to go get like the next patient or whatever. And when he did it, I, I, I set it up. So it's, so it's not even near me. And then I played with him so I could capture that way. It. He doesn't know that way. He didn't know. Yeah. I it doesn't change his behavior. It's not a big deal. So I try and do stuff like that if I can, where I can sneak it. Katrina got that one of him falling into the 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 bag he had no idea oh, yeah, like he was just doing that on his own and she was pretty good it. you could capture that oh i know yeah, she was like dying and she's like oh my god I gotta, if he does this again i have to capture it so she was like sneaking it yeah you know? we do that every now and then it i mean the, the easiest way for us to do it is like inside the house and we watch him play outside and that's how we got yeah that you one caught that of, one the uh, ever like <laughs> spinning himself video. till he got sick and like <laughs> fell over yeah like that's hilarious like i, I yeah. laughed i watched that of your son probably 10 times <laughs> yeah. so that's such and it shows his personality yeah. right like that is gold to me that you have that and you'll forever I have that. I wish, yeah, we, I wish we were better at that for sure. Like there, it is a balance. Um, and it's always like one of those, you're rushing to find it and then you miss like, like half of what happened, yes. uh, which sucks. Uh, my mom actually was very good about like documenting to like, so there's like VHS of like me and my brother, like all the way, like way too much. Like we, really? we've never even gone really? through it all. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She, that's cool. she was like obsessive did, about it. Did they have the big, the one that sits yeah, on the yeah, shoulder? That's, that's our era. Quarter, did they? Yes. And yeah. you have the, you have the V, the VCR Bro. attached to your hip. So, and then she, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, every basketball game or whatever, like, like, like it actually like uh, messed up her eye. Like gave her like a stigma. Like, wow. She yeah. did it that much. She did it that much, and then like to to the point where it was it was the same camera, and it, it actually had like it, the the screen turned green, and like to, to the point where she ended up like re gifting that to me later. Uh, and I'm like, what am I going to like make green videos with this, <laughs> like with this old camera tech. So anyway, I, ha I have like, now I appreciate it now going back, but I was like irritated as a kid. Cause I always had like the hand me down, hand me down, hand me down of everything. So, but, um, yeah, she, she pretty much got like all the camping, like all the things like of everybody we hung out. You with. know, what was weird about that era was that when you took pictures or, or video or whatever, the person developed, not video maybe, but pictures, you used to have to take your film to a place to develop. So people mm -hmm. who don't know, kids or whatever, you, you, you take pictures, you don't know how they turned out, you take the film, you take it somewhere, and the fast places would do an hour, usually it would take a day or two. Whoever was developing your photos saw your all your family. Mm -hmm. Like they could literally look yeah, through yeah. your photos <laughs> and see everything Bro. that happened. Oh, I was just don't you like, remember when that was like the prank? Yeah. You get your buddy's freaking camera. You oh, you just take somebody a just like a moon. <laughs> <laughs> so I they did go, that one time. So they go to their one hour photo and they're like, oh, look, this is a birthday. Oh, this, oh, oh, my God. Oh, why? You know, you just think about that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's funny, though. I was thinking, like, there's there's some videos because you're talking about your, like, your son kind of dancing yeah. and doing this thing. Like, I was very much like that kid, you know, and, and uh, would put wigs on and, like, do, like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I did the whole. Bro, I was a big Sharing wig guy. too much right now. Here we <laughs> go. Big guy. Hey, listen, man. This I, was the 90s, I, bro. This was yeah, before. This was before, 80s and 90s. This was before they rushed me off to get a surgery or something. Bro. Um, you know, like, yeah, oh my I was God, just experimenting. Hey, that's so, that's so appropriate right now. I swear to God. Like, oh, baby, he wants to be a girl. Yeah, let's go, let's go no, change. No, man. I was like, yeah. I thought I was like a rock star, you know. And I just want to put on a lot of different, like, outfits and whatnot. And so, like, I they, they videotaped me. And, like, I had this whole, like, play and stuff I do for the family. I remember getting 
like so mad because I didn't want to show it like outside the family. And one time, like we had all these like people over oh, just to I hang out. And then, and then she just snuck it in and put it on the TV. And I was like in my room, came down, they're all laughing. Ah! And I look up and it's me doing something. Dumb. And I was so embarrassed. Oh, so wow. I like, it's like one of those things you're I'm mad at your so mom. so mad. Yeah, yeah. Mad at your mom for like months after. Yes. I used, yeah. to, I used to do this dance. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I would. Stick my butt out and I'd like dance and smack my butt. Right, that's what I did. I, was, I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> that's right after the pillow fight. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to share with this one, you guys. You guys are gonna be on your own on this one. <laughs> Justin and I were in a video together, bro. It was a good time. We would have been, we'd have been friends. But my, my mom would put these home videos on, and then I'd pop up and I'd do that, and I'd be sitting around family or just like random people. My dad used to put videos all the time. We'd invite people over, friends. They're not even family. And my dad, oh, you want to see some home videos? And then, boom, there I am smacking my butt on the... Oh, and I'd hilarious. sit there and I'd just be like, oh, dad, dad. Oh, oh no. Now, so now they I love it because it. it's so funny. So I, I actually think that we are going to move into or evolve into something that it, it kind of solves what we're talking about, right? Because there, obviously it's uh, a value to have like this great footage right there, but then it also it's very valuable to be present. And so I, and I don't know if it looks like, I think we talked before, I, I thought there was going to be this like hover, these hovering balls that are around everybody. It's just in your eyeball maybe. Yeah. Well, so did you see the new, the new Apple vision? Yeah. So. Yeah. Who's uh, going to wear that though? Dude? I know. So I mean, I mean, that's the first rendition, right? So, I mean, you maybe it, the, the future of it looks like it's way less invasive and it's more like just like thin eyeglasses and it does all that stuff. I don't oh, know. Is that the one it's like. Like a really big it's goggles, goggle. yeah. and then it shows your eyes on the outside. So yeah. if I look at you, I it's oh, displaying your eyes. But it's so it's but kind it's of not your eyes. So the like screen it. is like showing the eyes, but you're not. Yes, it's not actually. And then it's it's, it's augmented reality. Yeah, uh, and you can you can control things with hand signals. Well, I'm gonna have to you, check that out. Yeah, I mean, pull it up, Doug. It's it looks cool. I don't. I mean, I don't see myself using this. Uh, but again, yeah. oh weird. So and it blends. So let's say Justin, I'm like this. So I'm. Uh, let's pretend I'm. I'm. What? I'm surfing the internet, right? Go yeah. back, Doug. So yeah. okay. okay, see how she controls. So, and, it? and then you come into the room. It actually senses you coming in the room, and it, it blurs out the computer, and it, now your face comes clear. Huh? Are people so gonna it, walk around with the shit on their face all over? The well, place? that's wow. the, that's the idea, right? Is so how can you integrate being able to walk around or be with other people while also being able to do this? Yeah. So yeah, if somebody, they're not showing somebody doing it right now, but if somebody walks into the room while you're doing it, it actually brings them into into sight for you. So you're not just in this VR. It's not VR. It's like AR. Dude, wow. I could just imagine this, this right now. Is this coming out in like for before Christmas? I'm going to Oh, of course. Yeah. I think you could buy it now. Right? So you can get it now? You could buy it Wait. now, right? Yeah, it's right no now. way. How much is it's it? It's like 3K, I think. 3,500. 3,500. Yeah. Okay. I, can you, okay, think of the Man, apps with trip. this. Think of all the apps. You put this on. Imagine you hire a babysitter or a caregiver. Oh, you got to put this on, put the babysitting app. It puts on, it goes on and it's monitoring the kid's heart rate, their body temperature. It's telling you if things are in danger. Oh, a, a kid is nearing a plug that is, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, child, uh, child appears to be hungry, sending off some signals that, or whatever. Baby's crying. looks like tummy issues. This is going to be weird. Yeah. This is super weird. By the way, I don't know if you guys are noticing or are, are, are reading. There's articles that are coming out about the demand and what people are like super excited to use it for. What do you guys think? What do you Porn. think? Porn. Porn. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Everything's that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Everything's that. That's first. how it all starts. But I mean, yeah. so, I'm, but obviously these things are, well, one, we're, we're older and this seems like really far-fetched and like, oh, I would never. Yeah. But I mean. But if you grow up using this? Right. You grow up using it and it becomes normal and or the, it gets, it evolves and it, it's less of this big clunky thing on your head and it's smaller. Or like I said, maybe it evolves to something that is like more, you know. What if you wear this all the time or something like this? It records everything all the time. That's what I'm saying. And then you... Justin and I get an argument. Bro, I can't believe you said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you did, bro. You that's know what I, mean? I dude, literally that's, said uh, it. that's that Black Mirror. How many arguments. That's that Black Mirror episode. Yeah. That's that oh. Black Mirror episode. Now, I guarantee thinks? that's gonna be that's gonna cause a lot of, of problems initially because like people really don't realize what comes out of their mouth. Yeah, or how they look. No, yeah. no, you said that you sounded like an asshole. No, I didn't. Well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, even myself, so I'm you like, you can oh, play yeah, devil's advocate with that, that and be like the positive side of that is the level of awareness. We one of the things we we talk about on this yeah. podcast is right. look at the growth that has happened because you actually have to hear your own bullshit. Yeah. Like you say it, it flies out of your mouth and it's done. But now on this podcast, I have to hear about it. And if I say something that is at all in one direction that somebody doesn't like, I get feedback right away. Yeah. And plus, then I go listen to it. Plus viewing everybody's reaction to yeah. what you're presenting. So right. either that or people become master at masters at faking it. 
I, because that's OMB inevitable, reported, right? That's inevitable, right? Yeah. There's always going to be actors, the sociopaths. There's always going to be actors, sociopaths. There's always going to be evil and bad in the world. But maybe for the majority, it actually becomes this great self awareness tool that makes people better people because they go, "Oh fuck, I was kind so of." So who do you think's going to win more arguments? Like that optimistic uh, with those glasses, husbands or wives? Do you who do you think's going to play back? <laughs> well, the you're going to play the sexes against us. How about take that in your own life? Yeah, like yeah. Your own, who do you think's going to win that more? Like I don't know. I didn't say I didn't do that. Uh, yeah, you just, did. Uh, just roll the feedback. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I mean, know. Roll the so playback. women are supposed to be better at like remembering all that well, stuff. Well, I mean, than we they are. are. Let's be honest. They yeah. Are so we probably we probably lose that. Yeah. That battle. Yeah, so. Maybe we do. Or what if they fooled us this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah anyway. We're, we're blind. But those things are crazy though, right? It I is. Mean, I, mean, it, I can't, I mean, think of right now the, the applications, the apps that are going to be developed for something like that. Like, what, well, what think about this? this. I mean, how often do we do, like, we set up a zoom call this, this Friday coming up. Like we got, uh, we, imagine doing like a conference. It looks like someone sitting in front of you. Yeah. Imagine, uh, and, and you're, or, or the, you see like on a Zoom where you can see their their screen. So they're- What if you go to a store, every product you look at, you could click and it opens up and explains it and shows you the, how right. it works. Or you just look at it and the price hovers. Yeah. You know, $4.99, wow. $7.99. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean- Totally minority report. Or it picks up, picks up somebody yeah. and it shows you all their other links. So I'm looking at you and I'm like, look at his Instagram. You don't even know I'm looking at your Instagram. Like this. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Well, think about that. Imagine your it's kind of cool. Search, yeah. Imagine you you you're you're on the street. You're just you're wearing something like this, or you're somewhere in the public, and I can look at Justin and all of his handles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can see his Twitter handle, his Instagram handle, like that. And if it's like, he seems like an interesting person, oh, I want to look at his thing. Yeah. Or I, or we just started talking and then I automatically now have that stored, you know, and I just go, oh, friend, you know? And it's like, now he's a friend and automatically friends. followers, loser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what's up, Sal? Yeah. Wow. Dude, I saw a crazy, you ever watch a video, uh, like a real video, and you're like, that is exactly my nightmare. That's exactly my nightmare. Okay. <laughs> I saw a video, you could probably find this uh, on online, Doug. There was some kayakers and they were just in the ocean, just whatever, and a whale <laughs> swallows them. No. A whale comes up, big ass whale. And actually like, swallowed swallows them. them whole? Swallows them. Now it spit them back out because it's a whale and they don't eat meat, right? So, but imagine if you're that, you're in the water. I was gonna say, this is like biblical. Bro. Yeah. Imagine you're in the whale going underwater. You're like, I guess I'm fucked. A whale wow. doesn't eat meat. Well, because it, it was krill. Yeah, they I was going to say, krill. yeah, they, they open their mouth super wide yeah. to get all the krill in there. So yeah. it was just probably going up to the surface. Yeah. Oh, look. Look at this. So, Doug, is that a video? Can so play a, a, video? a whale wouldn't eat like a big fish? Uh, I mean, if uh, it gets they, trapped in there, don't care. They eat them. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Like, Somebody actually fish, caught like, a video Turn off of the this? sound. Yeah, dude, look at that. I want to wow. hear the sound. Oh, maybe. Just scream. No, no. The person. Dude. And Matt, that's that's literally Dude, my nightmare. Somebody caught look, 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 look. Oh, just swallowed him. It just got him. And look at the people watching. They're like, "What? Look, at nobody's They're, freaking out." See you later, Fred. <laughs> yeah, dude. Look, look. It just comes up and oh. swallows the people. Wow! Terrifying, oh, dude. Bro, it, how come nobody around looks like they're freaking out? They're probably in disbelief. If you saw, if I saw, if I was swimming with you, <laughs> yeah, no, and no, a no. whale came up and swallowed you for about thirty seconds, I, I wouldn't dude, believe well, what I saw. Thank goodness they're, they're like, like Justin. Like, Did you creatures. catch that? Did you get that on video? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the, the whale swallows Justin. Starts sinking. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I can't swim. There's like, dude, there's like multiple angles. Oh, you know what? Because people were, they saw the whale was in the area. So everyone had their cameras out probably. Oh, there's multiple the angles. Look at that. Whoa. Wow. So in a kayak. What do you people got? People were watching. Like homie didn't yeah. even whales jump off. eat silverfish. A silverfish. So they were watching them. Like they were watching the whales. They were really close. And, and now these on the way of coming up, it's what it took the kayak. Did they, they survive? Yeah, they survived. I don't think it actually got swallowed. It, they got... In their well, because the boat right? was actually hanging out a little bit, so there was an opening. Wait, I, you don't even see them though. Yeah. After swallows, then the whale spit them out. Two person in kayak, both survived. No serious. Oh, so they actually did they all go down in the belly? Doug, once you're in its mouth, you're no, there, bro. The belly. I think There's, that's it. Yeah, okay. Just in the mouth. I think, yeah, I think I think they he closed his mouth. They closed their mouth, and then yeah. he opened it up after they went under. But still, that's like yeah, yeah, that's that crazy. Was terrifying. That's got to be the ultimate, like story that you could tell someone be like you know, someone's telling you like oh this crazy thing happening be like yeah that's crazy i'll wait till you're done yeah, yeah hold my beer 
Because I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, that is biblical shit though. Because a whale swallowed. Now you, yeah. you can't help but go back and be like, "What am I doing wrong? Yeah. <laughs> what did Dude, Jesus told me I was supposed to do? Yeah. What was the sign? <laughs> yeah, what am I <laughs> running away from? <laughs> what did He tell me I was supposed to do and I didn't do it? Dude, that, yeah, that would be yeah. me. I'd be like, yeah, you got some serious like, self assessment. I, I need to stop masturbating. <laughs> 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 Become a monk after that. Dude, I, uh, I speaking of whales, there was another. Uh, there was this report. So killer whales have been known to attack small boats if the small boats are interfering with their hunting patterns and stuff. Oh, wow. So there was this yeah. one boat that there was killer whales, and what they'll do is they'll come up and they'll whack the udder mm. until they break it or whatever. They're organized. And you, there you, was you ever seen them kill uh, seals? Like dude, what they do? Like, they'll whack, I saw they'll whack the what? The, I saw the, a the, video. Uh, the, 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 whatchamacallit? Rudder. Rudder, not, not the udder. Yeah, That's a cow. That's a cow. My bad. Sorry, Thanks, I should have caught that. that I said, uh, I know, you're the cow expert. I just nodded like, yeah, sure. What kind of cow expert are you? squeeze them. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, sure, I'm sure about the whale. I'm, yeah, not, like, I'm not a whale expert. Gonna say, <laughs> you know, you know. And I was like, I'm not going to disagree with Sal. Uh, this might be some science thing. Might be, <laughs> <laughs> there might be an udder on a boat. I see. I saw the killer whales doing this one time. It must have been a you know floating block of ice every bit. Oh, uh, it's where they they, they wash yes, the water every bit. Uh, Five thousand, <laughs> six thousand square feet, like huge, right? Yeah. And this this uh, big old you know sea otter is in the center of it. And they were intentionally creating the waves. To wash them off. Yes, to wa I wash them off. They washed them off. I ate that sucker. I was like, damn, that was like, yeah. the, and they were all coordinated. Yeah, they're smart. They man. were swimming together, and then throw a huge wave, and then eventually all broke. The sucker slid well, off. They're the kings of the ocean. They I are. Mean, it's like, yeah, great whites. They they're hunt scared them. Scared of them. Yeah, they hunt yeah, them. They hunt them. If they, sh if a great, if if killer whales show up where great whites are, great whites disappear and don't come back for like three or four seasons. Now, are they the, like a much higher intelligence? Do we know they're much? Uh, it seems like they're much smarter. They, they hunt sure. organized. Yeah, they or they hunt like they're like pack animals. Yes, right? they're so and sharks don't. Aren't, great, aren't dolphins supposed to be the smartest in the water? They're smart. Yeah, I they're think supposed so. to be. Aren't I they the most? I, I think uh, killer whales are up there though. Yeah, it depends. I, I guess on the um, they're related, aren't they? I think yeah, they're the related. Yeah. What's what's the name of them? They're orcas. Yeah, but it, but it, but the, what's the class? With, oh, with oh, the oh yeah. yeah. Let me yeah. let me find out. There is yeah. a. Yeah, but yeah, that. I mean, dolph dolphins obviously super smart. Yeah, so I was yeah. reading this report where they were and, on this uh, boat, and there's like the killer octopus. whales came up, started hitting their boat, smashed the rudder, it didn't stop. They all had to like call uh, Mayday because they were sinking, wow. and a boat came and saved them. Wow. That's how pissed off. Actually, the killer whales are considered uh, dolphins in the dolphin family. Oh, there yeah, you go, see, Sal, you're right. Dude, did you guys, speaking of ocean, whales, sharks, all this bullshit, did you see the, the Louis, Louisiana baseball player kid who oh, jumped off the boat intentionally? Bro. The, the, it was a, a cruise I heard ship. about that. that it was a, it was their sad. it was like their senior senior trip to Bahamas or something he like that. He got like a da like dared or he wanted to show off or something. Yeah, right? the, it was like totally did it intentionally. Everybody's laughing and videoing it like that and gone. Dead. Lost at sea. Ate by sharks. So they, they didn't find his body. It was that the issue? Like, because obviously, like, that's the thing is, like, I think people think that, like, they'll be easily found. And, and like, once you're in the middle of the ocean and the boat is, like, it's way gone. away, yeah, like, good you luck. don't have a it's, raft. What, you know what's so crazy? Like, I, I guess you just don't really think about, one, those massive cruise ships take miles to turn around. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like it can whip around like a little ski boat yeah. and come back and get him. He's them. gone, so dude. He doesn't have like a little GPS locator. I mean, I, I actually would have, I if I thought, I mean, I would have known better. I definitely would have done something that's stupid either, but to jump off like that and my friends all knowing, and then they go tell the captain, I would, you would think that we would be able to save me I in know. time. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, they would be able to turn it around and go. I think they threw him a, a life ring. They did. And he swam away from it. Probably goofing off. Being well, maybe, silly. or he saw something coming towards him. Oh, oh, that's what I thought. Is there a shark angle to the story? They, there is a shark angle I've, to the so, story. Okay, so I this is what I, I heard. Oh my that. god, that's even more. Terrifying. But I saw the video, and it doesn't look like he's screaming help or anything. I, I think it, even, it sounds like he's laughing, or that everyone's all like think it's a funny oh, thing. Dang, god. I don't know. You know when I see videos like that, it, they terrify me because I just imagine I'm on a cruise ship with one of my kids, and my little jumps off. Like, oh, what do you do? Yeah. Well, and especially like the teenager age, right? Like that. That's the whole like. Uh, the, it's the stupidest hierarchy. Yes. Like, like of it, all humans, the the dumbest in terms of boys. risk, pecking order stuff is teenage boys. Yeah, yeah. teenage boys yeah. are literally stupid. Yeah, like they see, they don't understand. Risk and danger. They just Test simply the limits. You know, don't, like it, I can do this. Yeah, I mean, I did things at that age that I look back and I would 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 slap the shit out of myself. Yeah, if I could. Isn't oh, that weird Same. that we all that we all do that? 
that you you everybody i don't know i don't know a single man that doesn't have a story of ages 15 to 18 range yeah. of him going like yeah that was probably some of the dumbest shit it's just was, stupid like dumb life stuff in cars like life threatening stuff dumb yeah. yes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. you know it, it's evolutionary there's there, the, well the theory is is that the the teenage to early 20s so like fifth like 16 to like you know 24 or whatever that's the age for conquest war for like dangerous, scary shit. And you need, and men are expendable, right? Because a whole bunch of us could die and society still survives because you don't need a lot of men to procreate uh, to create a bunch of offspring. You just need some men. So it's like, so basically we, we evolve. die off and the strong ones make it. Yeah, or no, or just they need crazy people. They need, we need people well, That's what I mean do, by the strong. They're strong, yeah. they're crazy and they survive. They're strong yeah. enough to do something that crazy and dangerous and make it through yeah. and then the weaker ones die, um, right? Do you guys have, I remember one time, this is <clears throat> just talking about it. It makes me upset because it's just so dumb. I, I remember one time my cousins and I, we first got our driver's licenses. So we were 16 years old and we were racing our cars in residential neighborhoods. I know. And I we were, that, we were racing backwards in the cars. We were, when I would try to pass someone up, I'd take the inside track around a corner. All someone had to do was be there <coughs> and it would have been a head on, like just the dumbest Stupid as shit when I think about it. Oh, That's yeah, we used to jump off cliffs. Like it was like we'd test each other to how tall the cliff was and, and just, just to see like why in the water you know, or on the why? ground. Dude, it, it, you land on the ground. It's like oh there, my god. Well, it was like sand dunes, so there, like some areas we did it, like it was like it was soft enough to like kind of catch the fall. Some wasn't, it was just like rocks, you know, and, and we would just like ah just run off and just jump. You know, just to see if like you're tough enough to if you could go live. for it. <laughs> live. Stupid, so dude. Dumb. I could like you know be paralyzed. Oh, actually, I know someone who did that. <clears throat> yeah, I know someone who got he, he him and his buddies were daring each other, and he did that and paralyzed from the chest down. Ugh, yeah, yeah. All right. brutal. Yeah, no, we did the whole the car thing for sure, right? So when we were 16, there was there was a town between or a, a little strip, like a little highway. It was a country road, right? So. Uh, obviously not a super busy road, but nonetheless, absolutely stupid. Um, and anybody who's been around the Central Valley, the Central Valley is known for its fog. <clears throat> it's some, uh, it's the worst fog you've ever seen in your yeah. life, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so thick, like you can, you can wave your hand and like it cuts, like it's, and you can't you see, see nothing. The, you can't yeah. see the end of your hood of your car. That's right. how thick the fog is. And it was like a, a, a night like that. And we're heading to a party 30 minutes away on this highway. And there's like four of us that are driving all of our cars and we're racing, you know, we're <laughs> racing and passing each so other. So stupid. And, you know, we're, and we're, you know, one of my buddies is driving like an old, you know, a Toyota Camry and he's, you know, he'll, he would merge over and we're all throttling it, trying not to let him pass. And he's, and so the pass is like slow and you're in the opposite lane and the fog, Dude. you can't see the, I mean, just... When you think back, like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, you literally are just gambling with your life. And and you think at that time, it's like this, like, beat your chest alpha thing to do. That yeah. seems like so cool when you're doing it. And I look oh, back now as an like, adult, oh all I God. can think of every time is, I don't know if you guys know the band My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Like the that song, the teenagers scare the living shit out of me. Yeah, yeah it's like it, it is completely where I'm at now. Yeah, I used yeah. to do this thing where I would drive in the car and we'd go down a dark, dirt road and if i was with a girl i thought it was shut funny. the lights off shut the lights yeah, off and let's see how far i could drive before yeah, yeah. you yell chicken or whatever or and i thought it was hilarious literally, literally can't see that anything. was like a game you play who, you like who would who be the first to like all right, all right give, i give up go on turn it on turn it on stupid yeah. Yeah. oh and then you have kids as a dad and you know, well, and you're like, bro, well, I told you that one time I was in chemistry with my, my buddy and we all did this experiment where you shock each other, like where you make a circle, everybody's holding hands. And then you have like, they call it our, our, we had an unconventional chemistry teacher. Let's just say he, <laughs> like we were able to blow stuff up and like, uh, it was awesome. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But, uh, so there was this one, um, <laughs> it, it like created a charge and, and so uh, there'd be two people holding at, at one end and then we create this big chain. And so he was just demonstrating that the electrical current would go through all of us. And so people would get eliminated. We made it like a game out of it. Right. And so it ended up people dropping out, but we kept going and it was just me and my friend holding the thing like this and we crank up the amplitude as high as we could and we're just holding them like G -g 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 -g. my hair is like going everywhere. 
<laughs> what? Just what? to see how long we can hold Whoa. it. What Somebody was, pulled the plug finally on us, dude. What was the name of the speaker that we saw at Dave Ramsey's thing who tried to, what, he tried to light fireworks? Oh what my you, God, remember? dude. That's His what, last name's O'Leary. Let me, O'Leary. Uh, let me yes. see if I can find And so okay, what was he, I, remind me what he was doing. He okay, was, so he's- so, Same type of bullshit so story. He oh, comes out. God. This is the worst of it. He oh. comes out, first off, uh, it John was O'Leary. John, John O'Leary. O'Leary. So all the talks there, except for one, were re- incredible. Yeah. All moving, all yeah. very powerful. Uh, all of them you take something away from. So they were all Dude, just one after one another. This destroyed me. This is the one, though, that got all of us to cry yeah. several times. <laughs> several times. So, so he comes out, and he's obviously disabled. He has no fingers on either hand, and you could see that he's suffered some uh, some burns on his body. And when he was nine, nine or 10, I guess he saw some teenage boys in the neighborhood uh, play with gasoline and, and, and fire. He thought it would be fun to try it himself in his garage. Didn't realize that the fumes light opened the gas tank with the lighter on, I guess, and it just exploded, right? So as a 10-year-old boy, just, yeah. just uh, lit, the whole house went up and he was covered 90% of his body yeah. in burns. Anyway, uh, long story short, uh, first of all, um, hilarious guy, incredibly motivating story, very painful yeah. process, ends up getting married to this <coughs> beautiful woman, has four kids, becomes an incredibly successful speaker. Anyway, as he's talking, remember this guy has no hands, there's a piano in the back and oh he starts telling God. a story about oh how God. his mom hired a piano teacher, which is crazy. Your mom's gonna hire a piano teacher and have your fingers. She shows up and she says to him, this is going to be hard, almost impossible, but I'm going to do this with you. And that became kind of like. Well, she started by like uh, rubber banding a pencil. A pencil. Yeah, pencil. To it. yeah. So he goes back yeah. and I'm like, oh. I swear, to, I'm thinking in my head as I'm watching him tell a story. And then I notice the piano. I'm like, I swear to God, if he goes back there and starts playing a song, I'm going to start crying. What does he do? <laughs> Immediately. He Boom. goes back there and starts playing Waterworks. a song. Waterworks. Yeah. <clears throat> like, oh God, this guy. What a crazy, what oh. a great speaker. What a I mean, powerful yeah. story. Yeah, it was. It was incredible. He was incredible. But I mean, again, just the reason why I even brought it up was it boys. highlights the, this, yeah. the boy, just the way your, your, your brain ticks, you know what I'm yep. saying? At that age is wild like the whole the whole theme of that story was uh, do, uh always uh, don't turn something down that is that is for good in other words when something presents itself if it's for good say yes to it and and the story he says is i don't remember what job he was doing and he just like was whatever and uh some some guy came up to him and said hey will you talk to my <clears throat> I think it was in my rotary club. No, it was started at the, the kindergarten class oh, of yeah. like two kids or four oh, sorry, kids. Yeah. Three uh, um, uh, Girl Scout cookie. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 And Girl he goes Scout. and he goes, well, you know, he made this decision with himself that I'm never going to say no for something for good. And it was free. So he goes and he talks. And then another person said, hey, will you come talk to my rotary Anyway, the, he, this turned into this guy becoming one of this, this massive this ex- motivational exceptional speaker. speaker. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what he does uh, to this day. So. Yeah. It was really, yeah. really, 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 really good. <clears throat> story. That was a great one. Yeah. By the way, did you guys hear uh, Apple change, like did something with their spell check? Yes. Finally? Yes. It's fucking <laughs> fuck. No, no longer you, will you sign me allowing it. So it doesn't yeah. change it to duck right No away. longer yeah. says you know how annoying that is when, I hate you, that. when you're cussing on there yeah. and you want to get it out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I ducking hate this. Uh, uh, <laughs> so now it fixes it. So you can say the F word. Wow. What do you think that is? is that like, what, I, like you you committed to doing that. It's been that way forever, and now, and like now you're doing it. Like, why? Why? Yeah, I mean, that's a market demand. I think so many people do it and yeah. change it. Like, who the hell says duck in a sentence? Almost uh, never, right? But everybody says the f word yeah. several times a day. Going fuck hunting. I mean, like, <laughs> that's not gonna be good. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, you're yeah. staying I, home. I gotta <laughs> have a whole new thing to like explain now. <laughs> you know who knows? Your Dude. wife's like, you're not going there. You're not no, doing no, no, that anymore. No, no, no. You and the guys. I'm not gonna let you do that this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I know he saw it. Did you? Did you guys see Al Pacino? I didn't. Bro. I heard though he had a, a baby. The or he's old, having the one. oldest actor ever. He's 86. To have yeah, 86 or something. And, or and isn't his the girl like 29? Is she 29? Yeah, I think she's 29. Bro, hey. he actually she had her take great granddaughter. He had, she, wow. he, he had her take a maternity deck. test because he wanted to make sure. Yeah, and it was his. Yeah, it's his. <laughs> Wow. wow. So I, I now, like, are, is so, that bragging or are you like works? No, like, yeah, bro, you should be like... embarrassed, dude. I mean, that's like I was telling Katrina, I'm like, that when you're you're eighty, I think he's eighty nine. He's not going to be he's, around. He's exactly your kid's gonna be ten. 83. Eighty three. He's eighty three. What was Robert De Niro when he had his? Robert De Niro was like seventy eight. Hey, you notice what these guys have in common? Hmm. 
money italian oh yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> no i think i think to have I don't a, know. to I don't have know. a child that late <laughs> I got four, you know? is so it's such a, a such a disservice and so unfortunate. yeah but i don't think he did it on purpose he wasn't trying to get her pregnant he just had sex. You don't think so? I th- I you thought... think he was like, you're going to get pregnant? Yeah. No, I well, think he just had sex. Well, what do you think happens when you have sex without a condom? Well, I know that, <laughs> dude. This <laughs> fucking guy. With, a, tw- with, a, with a vibrant 29-year-old. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you're, you're 83, not, bro. You're not begging your 80-year-old wife or girlfriend, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, you're yeah. having sex with a 29-year-old. Like, she's at her prime. Damn. Yeah, De Niro oh. was 79. Wow. See? Spring chicken. Hey, yeah. I wonder if, if Pacino called him <laughs> afterwards. Hey, bro. I beat you, you know? Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> uh, because, you know, the, if you're 83, okay, 90. I mean, he's, he's he'd be lucky to live into his late 90s. So at best, your kid makes it to his early know. teens. You yeah, know, that's, it's, that's brutal. And then, and, then, and even he, then, like, even let's for him, him be married, beside his kid. His know, mom's going to have a lot of money to get remarried, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then that's oh, like, yeah, you, you deprive that kid of their dad. I don't know. Yeah. Someone who Unless didn't have their dad for most of their life. Like, I, I take that like. Look, well, oh, I guarantee you, like, up. Elon Musk will keep doing it, right? This isn't his mission to, like, repopulate, repopulate and, yeah. you know, he's like, yeah, but he's stop. young, though. Well, you, oh, you mean keep going? Like, he's going to keep going, yeah. Is he? Is he? Oh, Wouldn't by he? the way, speaking of that, we talked on the podcast. Somebody DM'd me and said there is a law that after you have 12 kids, that you can actually, or, or after 10 kids, you can fight child support. Whoa. Wow, that's wow. the number. <laughs> Fact check that's me. Okay, <laughs> we talked about Just it. Keep going. Once Never, you get to ten, go. you're like, cool. I don't go. care. We go. we we brought up what's Beat his name. What's his name that has all the kids? Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon, right? Who's got I think twelve or something like that. And we said that that's bullshit. There's no because someone else had said yeah. that before. And then somebody reached out to me and said, I it's there's actually, a limit. There is supposedly after it's either ten or twelve. After you have ten or twelve, imagine kids, if the woman does finds it all out to be after. the same partner. Now here's like, what I said to the work? person because I didn't get a chance to like dig deep into this. I said that's most likely to protect some broke dad who's messed up 10, 12 times and had twelve kids or whatever, and not the multi millionaire. I said I doubt yeah. I doubt that like I doubt that will hold up for him. Yeah, I'm right, sure yeah. His, yeah, wh- right. whoever he yeah, had the twelve kids with. Afford it. Yes, so I'm like. Maybe that 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 ro- that law or loophole is there. So in case some guy who is absolutely broke and had his has his tenth or twelfth kid has a way out, but I doubt that Nick Cannon gets away with not paying child support. No, to- I'm sure that's crazy. You find anything, Doug? I'm looking for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I think. I mean, obviously. Okay. First off, Al Pacino obviously had sex with her. And then I don't think he's trying to get her pregnant. So, you know, embarrassed, he might be like, fuck, well, I mean, okay, I guess here we go. Like, what are you going to do? I mean, if I'm him, selfishly, I'm happy and I'm fine. That's good for him. He's happy, but that's that's totally selfish. Yeah. That's how I look at that. Like, he, of course, he's not upset or whatever. It's like... <laughs> Cool. I mean, you uh, you know you how, get how much joy how joy how much joy a child brings. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure it, for him it's all great. But I'm saying like, yeah, talk about not being responsible, not thinking about the kid. Like, what does the what does the wife look like? I, I got to see what the, what she looks like. How does that work with with men? Uh, though, too. Yeah, yeah. Let's I, see the girl. Was I right? Was she 29 or 39? I'm not sure. Let me. Pull no, it she's in, in her terms 20s. of genetic. Yeah, um, That's crazy. Huh? Like potential d- defects. Higher. Or, you know. Right. Like higher. The, yeah. Because. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the women, I know, like it's it's there's for a men, it's not that high though. But it's I, still yeah. higher. Yeah, oh, of course, it's yeah. higher, but yeah. it's not like not like women. Women, no. it, women, it gets exponentially higher yes. as they get older. Yes, but yeah. not men, not yeah. a lot for for like issues. But yeah. you know, like, uh, but still, there's higher risks with an older. Yeah, twenty nine years old. Dude, can 20... I see what she looks like? I want to see what this this girl looks like. What <laughs> yes. is she like? What is she? She's all laying next to this wrinkly. Like, yeah. What's going on here? Well, you know, let me well, get a picture. Think, Pacino's got some swag to him. I mean, yeah. he's eighty three. I still bro. remember Ann Nicole yeah, Smith yeah. in that one. Yeah, like the uh, guy looked like the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Yeah. At least Al Pacino looks a little bit. You know, yeah, not so. He bad. still looks. Yeah, like let's see what let's see what this uh, what this situation looks like. Ooh, oh my god. gosh! Oh she's, god, he looks bad. She's there. pretty. She's gorgeous. Yeah, she's we talk about gorgeous. And he's in, wow. Okay, and he looks bad right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, he looks. I, I, those must be pictures where people are trying to make him look bad, right? Get, well, find like for a, an eighty-three year old, he looks pretty I mean, good. That's not bad for an eighty-three year old. How many eighty-three year olds have you seen? In oh your my life? God, he does look. He does look bad, dude. Yeah, I feel like they've chosen a really bad. That's what I think too. Can you find me a picture where he like actually he's was like dressed up, do. going somewhere nice together, where like maybe he's done up a little bit because those look like people are trying. I wonder to make how. Him. I wonder if this. Those are those are magazine things trying to make him look like he's about to die with a, a young hot chick. I mean, you know, 
God. Yeah, no, he looks pretty. He looks like death, well, man. Well, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he's <laughs> happy. He doesn't look bad. He's 83, bro. For an 83 year old, he looks good. Yeah, okay, right there. Okay, well, that's that's he turns 80 right there. That's three years ago. Yeah. yeah. So listen, 83 years old looks a lot older than that, or 80 year old looks a lot older than that. So, yeah. geez, man. Well, I guess. Right. <laughs> Good I'm job, Al. Hello to my little friend. Right? No, That's yeah. a lot of Viagra's, huh? Yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. I looked into the kids thing, and it's not true. Um, so the the case came up actually with Nick Cannon. It was one of her one of his baby mamas on Selling Sunset, the show. She made the claim that after ten kids, you don't have to pay child support. But it's not true. It's, <laughs> That's what he told her. It's, <laughs> it's not true, yeah. Basically, it, it looks like Nick convinced her. Like, <laughs> not, sorry, babe. <laughs> Oh, well, listen, we could date, uh, but here's the problem. Like, yeah. once I, 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 I appreciate the tanned, hustle so. there, but yeah. She's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. We should tell our friends that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, sorry, Nick, you got to pay, buddy. But you could tell people you have my kid. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's worth something. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Oh, anyway. my God. Yeah. So bad. All right. So I got, uh, I'm going to bring up some cool, a cool study that I just uh, pulled up on uh, eating disorders or disordered eating, right? And there's there's varying degrees of, Disordered eating that could be as extreme as, you know, clinical anorexia, or it could be the kind of disordered eating where you just have challenges with food and, you know, stuff like that. So check this out. This is in Psychology Today. The title of the article is The Intersection of Trauma and Eating Disorders. So new research shows how trauma therapy helps recovery from an eating disorder. Up to 50 people. 50% of people with eating disorders also have PTSD. <clears throat> and they're finding in these studies that one of the challenges with eating disorders is mm. a large percentage of people drop out of therapy and then they go back to whatever they were doing before. But when these people get P like, like therapy for trauma, the success rate is much higher because that was the root of the mm. self-hate, the, the root of why they were medicating with food. It was uh, because of the trauma. Pretty crazy. Now, for us as trainers who work with people, I don't think that's too shocking. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, all, there's, all, there's often a connection, but it's pretty cool now. The medical community is starting to yeah, recognize. They're kind of pinpointing it now, like, yeah. and looking into that. That's good. How so, much, how much do you think uh, psilocybin can play uh, in a role in that? Well, I don't. Um, so the the it's trauma connected. Yeah. So the therapy, the studies on therapy with. Uh, you know, they'll call psychedelics, psilocybin, uh, ketamine, I think the is up MDMA. there. Uh, MDMA uh, is up there. Uh, finds a high success rate with uh, PTSD. S there's also studies that show a success rate with alcoholism. Mm. In fact, you might, might look this up, Doug. Uh, psychedelic therapy for alcoholism study. Maybe Google that. Uh, so I think, I mean, I, we've talked about this before. This is a whole new frontier of, uh, yeah, why are we not moving faster? We right? are. Do you, do, is it moving faster? Ketamine therapy is legal in California. Yeah. Literally. You could go right now, <clears throat> if you have trauma or you need to work through something or whatever, you could go to a place and you could do ketamine therapy right now with a licensed uh, individual. Well, isn't psilocybin in Oregon legal now? Like in yes. recreationally as well as uh, I don't know if it's legal for- I think in I Colorado, they're using it for therapy already. Are they? I think, so. I think it was wow. Colorado I saw that was using it already. I know there's some places that are. I, I haven't tried, I, I'd be really interested. How I wonder how close ketamine feels like to psilocybin. I think it's very different. I don't think, I have no idea to be honest with you. I've never tried it, but from what I've read, I don't think it's classic- psychedelic yeah uh, i thought I, I don't know i, I totally so, wrong there's more of like a almost like tranquilizer it is a tranquilizer okay, okay so see so here it says psychedelic drug helped people with alcohol use disorder reduce drinking study shows so okay so mdma for example is in the category of uh psychedelics but it doesn't make you see things like mushrooms or lsd it's known as an entheogen so it's a it's a psychedelic with your emotions <clears throat> and perception. I think ketamine is similar. Mm. So you're not going to so take it in this feeling like a MDMA feel, feel maybe, it. right? So you're not going to see things <clears throat> like if you, if you did those things or notice bright colors and all that other stuff, but rather you may uh, be able to perceive. That's how I feel like, like, like a micro dose of psilocybin. So sure. All the times that I've done psilocybin, I have yet to do like a heroic dose or some crazy psychedelic. Trip. I have no desire to do that. Yeah. Mm. Every time it's been like a, a micro dose and even the, the, like, I don't know what you call in between a micro and a, like a big dose or whatever, but 
where I can like, like a see museum dose. There is there like that, right? a term for it. I don't yeah, know. I'm not that is familiar. a term. There museum is. dose. Is it? Yeah. You take it and you go to the museums and look at shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've been, I've, I've had doses high enough that I can like look at the clouds and get all the kind of psychedelic stuff, but then I can like focus where I'm at and then I can pull. But you're out. not like gone. I'm, yeah. I'm pull, I can pull out of it. Right. So I, I've been there, but every time we do it's it always opens doors for me. It always is open, like some sort of connection with Katrina or something that we had been talking about in our relationship or our, I, I see things from a different perspective and see, I can just see how much how much value this would have for a lot of people that I also recognize the the pitfalls, the dangers, the the people that yeah. are going to chase that. You know, we've witnessed that in our own space like it's become like it, and it feels like what every 20 to 30 years it's not is, a replacement for spiritual practice no, or religion. No. This is what people start to do with it. <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. and, and they end up chasing the high versus actually putting the work into the thing that was revealed to you. Well, they start referring to psych. This is when you know that they've gone, I don't know, when they start to refer these to these substances as godlike deities, like Mother Aya or yeah. whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. Like the plant will tell you like it's a god itself. Yeah. Uh, then what they're doing is substituting a spiritual practice or religion for. But uh, that's what, it's a bummer because of that, because I feel like we have, we have these two ends of the spectrum that most people that are unfamiliar, scared, or have never messed with it, look at it. It's like, oh, you either have the super hardcore, you know, you know, mother ayahuasca type people, or you have the drug seeking people where it's like, there's, there is actually an application for this that could help a lot of people out with trauma or relationships what, of going in. Go the back to where that page was, Doug. That was a crazy stat that I was on. Whoever had the TV up there, the, I read that two I think therapy sessions with psilocybin yeah, it, it, reduced like 85%, right? Eight, oh, oh, almost 90% yeah, yeah, of no, heavy I've drinking. That. I've seen that. Wow. With drinking. That's, it's and that was, it's like incredible. unbelievably successful. Not like kind, like, you know, like, okay, here's the thing. Like we talk about, we, 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 we talk about the benefits of cannabis and cannabis has been amazing and it's got all these positive things. And you're talking about making incremental change and help for people. You're talking about 85, 90 yeah, percent. Scroll of up, that's crazy because there's also you've heard of ibogaine has like a crazy success rate as well Opiates. with addiction. Yeah, heroin yeah. and heroin. In particular. Yeah. What's the ibogaine? No, ibogaine. ibogaine. It's this ibogaine? African plant that is supposedly can be really powerful. It's supposedly scary. really unpleasant. It can be really scary. Yeah, <laughs> but they'll go do one dose of it and yeah. then never want forever. Use, no never want to use heroin or opiates yeah. again. Interesting, no but it could kill you. <laughs> it, it that's can. the scary part yeah no no, no. it can it's supposedly really uncomfortable oh my god and, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah look at this uh during the eight month trial 93 men and women ages 25 to 65 were chosen to receive either two psilocybin doses or antihistamine pills i guess that's the control uh and and, and they also used a placebo and they did 12 psychotherapy sessions so two doses of psilocybin 12 psychotherapy sessions more than 80% of those who were given the psychedelic treatment had drastically reduced their drinking. Eight months wow. after the study started. Yeah, in 80% success rate? 80, eight months later. 80% success rate is insane. It's That's powerful, crazy. Man. That's what I'm saying. Like, why, why is it not? Because they ha there is no pharmaceutical psilocybin. That's why. There is That's no the only reason why. The, yeah. the bullshit thing about all this is because there's not a way for yeah. pharma to make a fuck ton of money off of it. And so it's like, yeah. you got to scour. As soon as that happens... Hopefully, It'll yeah, more yeah. people will just move in that direction. Then, it, then it's going to be like that. All right, uh, yeah. uh, on the medicine front, create, this is a massive potential breakthrough. So for parents with children who have mm. severe food allergies, which now are way too common, they're just, when I when we were kids, it was rare to, to know a kid with a food mm. allergy where they could die, yeah. uh, like a peanut allergy. These days, now in most Corn schools- Corn nut Jimmy. You know, yeah, nobody can eat corn nuts. Around. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> this is a corn nut allergy. Yeah. <laughs> I was such a dick. Yeah, right these what is that real kid? Yeah, what well, no, was thing. it? Corn nut yeah, Jimmy. Was we, all, we all yeah, we stopped like bringing in food and everything because like he had allergies that were real bad. Wait, wait, are you seriously bullying Jimmy still? I'm not. <laughs> this was, <laughs> Wait, wait, corn nut I was just Jimmy? joking. Uh, uh, yeah. Was it real or is it real? Uh, no, it's real, yeah. <laughs> corn nut Jimmy. Yeah, no, I was just kidding, <laughs> but really. But also it happened. <laughs> All right, so, so anyway. Continue. So anyway, uh, now schools have like peanut or allergy-free tables yeah, or yeah. areas. Max can't bring, can't even have, can, we can't even make him peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Yeah. Katrina was all pissed off. Because it's that. so bad that even just secondhand exposure, boom, will kill you, right? Yeah, and they, yeah. they have to have EpiPens everywhere. It's really scary. My sister has uh, a, a kid like that. And it's just so, she, and she's always got to be real careful. It's really stressful. 
She's had to use an EpiPen on him, I think, a couple times. She's got PTSD from that experience, by the way. If you watch your- Can imagine. You watch your four-year-old stop breathing, and then you got to hit him oh, with this thing and oh hope that God. they come back. Oh, like, God. So it's scary, right? Well, anyway, there's this. they've been using this patch where they'll put this patch on a kid, and in the patch are micro doses or micron doses of the peanut that slowly goes into the system. And I think they gradually increase the dose of the patch. Mm. They've successfully gotten these kids who are deathly allergic to be able to eat like up to one or two peanuts and have no issues. So this wow. doesn't mean they're going to eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches, but no, they're now out of danger. But they can, yeah, they That's can awesome. at least have it around them. That's yeah, they're not going to die yeah. because you opened peanuts next to them and the dust flew yeah. in the air, right? Wow, that's awesome. That's rem This is a huge breakthrough. What, what, remember when we were talking about Justin getting his poison oak and stuff like that, and I was telling you that, like, I remember hearing, like, w one of the strategies is people would eat poison oak or like, intentionally, like, I get have it. heard that. Yeah. Yes, they would do that to keep, Makes like, sense. Yeah, to get it into their their body adapted to it that way, especially if you lived in an area where there was lots of it all the time instead yeah. of like having to get it all the time. Like they would eat it in order to get it into their system and then their body wouldn't get the same reaction yep. as like the average person who'd come across Makes it. Makes sense. Did wow. you guys, you know, this reminds me of that scene from one of my favorite movies of all time, The Princess Bride. You guys ever watch that? That's yep. one of your favorite movies. One of my favorite movies. Justin's yeah. too, I bet. I do love it. See, yeah, there so you go. You're the only one, bro. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen it once. It's a great movie. Andre the Giant. Six oh. Finger Man. Yes, uh, such yeah. a great movie. Yeah. My name is something. Name is something uh, the scene where the guy is, the, the, the guy's like, you know, when death, you know, never mess with a Sicilian when death is on the line and he puts the poison out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the guy drinks it and he goes, he goes, I poisoned both of them, but I built up a tolerance. Built up to the it. tolerance, yeah. 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 That's By favorite. the way, I would uh, caution against eating poison oak. It seems to be a myth. Oh, uh, great. Thanks, really? Doug. Uh, yeah. Look at that. Doug just uh, saved us a lawsuit. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't Good do job. that, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Don't listen to Adam. I wasn't yeah. real excited to do that anyway. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know who's running out there to go put this. This is why you didn't correct me earlier when I said utter. Because he's like, I don't know. I've been wrong so many times. <laughs> <laughs> there might be an utter on a boat. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Hey, so the shout out has got to be that guy that we just talked about. Yeah. Talked John O'Leary. So John O'Leary dot inspires. Is that on Instagram, Doug? That is Instagram, okay. yes. You got to find this guy. Watch his talks. I'm telling you, it's it, it was moving. Great. Yeah, love that guy. Hey, look, if you love strength training but want to be able to work out at home, go check out a company called PRX. They make gym home equipment. It's literally as good as the stuff you see in commercial gyms, except it's designed to be used at home. For example, they have a squat rack that folds into the wall. It literally comes off the wall, uh, and you can use it as a squat rack, but when it folds up, it's less than six inches. It's like four inches off the wall. So you can park your car in the garage, use the room, whatever. They have weight plates, barbells, dumbbells, uh, safeties, all kinds of stuff. Go check them out. And you can also pay monthly. So it's like a gym membership again, but you work out at home. Go to prxperformance.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get a 5% discount. All right, back to the show. First question is from Canadian Mom Runs. Why is tackling your weight training as a circuit better, worse, or different than doing it in a non-circuit format. Okay, one of the things it that worse. makes it's, it's worse. Yeah, one of the things that makes strength training or resistance training, resistance training or strength training, is well, there's a few factors. You're lifting something heavy. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for reps, usually under thirty, and you're resting in between sets. If you yeah. cut the rest out, you are essentially doing cardio with weights. Yeah, and you lose ninety-five percent of the value of the strength training, the muscle building, the <clears throat> metabolism boosting. Makes a big difference. Affects the sculpting. You're just doing cardio with weights and, and people think this is strength training. It's not. It's more conditioning. It's more endurance training than it is uh, strength training. There's a reason why curves died. Yeah. And was for a moment in time, the one of the most popular chains in the world is it got great marketing around it, exploded. And then when everybody realized it sucks for what it's trying to accomplish. You burn died. calories, right? Yeah, and, and that's that's really like the the benefit is is burning calories. But it's if you're trying to actually build strength, build muscle, like it's just not as valid of a strategy. There's no, it doesn't boost your metabolism. And the, and then trying to work out to burn calories to lose weight is a terrible strategy. Anyways, we've talked about yeah on the show many times. So it's moving, and if you don't hurt yourself, it's better than not moving. But if you're trying to gain the benefits of strength training that we talk about so much on the podcast, uh, circuit training is just not the way to do it. Now. There's a way to do it that'll give you some of the effects of strength training. Like you could do HIIT training with weights without too many exercises combined mm -hmm. with a break in between the combination. 
and you're still not getting the same effects as strength training, but you're getting some of the effects. Okay. But but to, to 90% of the people watching this or more, like, don't do that. You're also bringing up a point here in terms of, like, the quality of reps and, and yeah. the quality of the exercises. A lot of times when you put together a circuit, um, the actual kind of bang for your buck exercise, you, you don't really include those in there because they're highly technical, high risk. And so you're going to add a bunch of these, like, easier <laughs> – um, exercises to get through. Uh, and also too, like, uh, the fatigue sets in which the fatigue actually like hinders a lot of like really good performance as you're, you're performing these lifts. So, well, look at the, to your point, Justin, remember when we used to at 24 fitness, they had the, um, what was it called? The something, something zone. zone. Yeah. Yeah. What was it called? Uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. It was, was, not fat. zone. it was, I can't remember what it was called. So <laughs> <Fat zone. laughs> you just entered the fat. zone. Hey, everybody <laughs> loved getting in line hey, for that. Why are you taking <laughs> the alarm me? goes off? Yeah. <laughs> we got why, another one. <laughs> why are you taking me to the fat zone? <laughs> this is terrible. What are you guy. trying to say? <laughs> you're, you're like the worst trainer horrible ever. Market, horrible marketing, dude. <laughs> horrible marketing. It was not called the fat zone. It was called something else. Zone. So, but it was 24 hour fitness. It was there. It was there. <laughs> answer or response to the the rise of curves and so it literally had a a, a machine for every muscle so like a, a shoulder press machine a bicep curl and then a tricep yeah, extension machine, 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 machine a leg extension a leg. okay so it was like a, a bunch of these machines you could do that right three times through consecutively 15 reps 15 reps 15 reps consecutively three times through and it is less valuable than someone doing three sets of eight barbell back squats. Yeah. Like that's how how shitty circuit training is in comparison yep. to one exercise done eight times or, or eight reps for three sets. Like you're talking about, and by the way, it would take same amount of time or less just to do those three sets. That's how that's how significant of a difference circuit training is to you would get almost identical results if you literally did jumping jacks the whole time. You're, That's how yeah. worthless yes. it is. So same effect. Next question is from Mario Munoz. Six are BCAA or EAA powders worth buying? So BCAA stands for branch chain amino acids. This is leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Essential amino acids, which include the branch chain amino acids, are all the amino acids that you have to eat because your body can't produce them. That's why they're called essential. They're only worth buying and using if your protein intake is low and you don't want to eat more protein, okay? So if you're eating a low-protein diet, you don't want to take a protein powder to help, you don't want to eat more protein, then these will benefit you. You'll notice more muscle, you'll notice better recovery and more strength. Now, if you're okay with taking a scoop of protein powder, like whey protein or plant protein, or you're okay with just eating more protein, that's way better because protein has... Branched amino acids and essential amino acids in it. <clears throat> Literally, a scoop of whey protein is going to give you more of both of these than a scoop of a powder that is both of these. So if your protein intake's high, then then you're that's a, it's like it, literally it would be like you have a it's like having a swimming pool full of water to the rim. So and you add more water to it, and it just spills out, it does nothing. It's not it's not doing anything more. Uh, for you, uh, uh, do you do you? Uh, I, 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 we get this question a lot because I know they're marketed like crazy. Yeah. And I and I try and think of like where, where I where I would find application with because there's there's always seems to be some sort of application somewhere where it's like okay that makes sense this yeah. is where I give it to it. It's really hard for me here because even with the marathon runner mm -hmm. or the 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 endurance training person, I, I still think that I would do a scoop away yeah, or ready to drink protein shake yeah, yeah. right like I would just do that really quick and get the the calories and the pro which my body would need both right I need a little bit of get more glucose I just went on a four hour run so I'm gonna need some quick and let's say I went on a four hour run well, and I'm about to go do something else it's like I want to get quick calories I want carbs I want I want protein like I wouldn't get it through. I wouldn't take pills. Yeah. No. Is it like if they're competing like in their marathon run and like, uh, let's say because it's like, it's, it's a powder that can mix with water and it's like hydrating versus like a protein shake that's thick and maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm like racking my brain for something. I had one guy that benefited <clears throat> from this and that's because he was a friend of mine who did jujitsu with me and his, he was a vegetarian. His protein was low and I couldn't talk him into taking a protein powder He's like, I don't want that process crap. That was his answer. So for Instead, some I'll reason- take, I'll take these pills instead. For some reason, he was okay. I'll take the processed stuff that's smashed up yeah. in a pill though. Yeah, yeah. He, he was able to- Concentrated. Yeah, I'll take the Thank protein you. powder, take out all the other amino acids, put it in a pill form and I'll take that. That's what he did. And he saw great results because his protein intake was low, but he would have got better results 
had he just taken a protein powder or eaten more protein? So I think that's a good so that's a good point, Sal. Okay, this is where this is like where there is even an argument here, right? Because there'll be like, oh bullshit, there's the studies that show this, or it's like, okay, if you are a um a, a man or a woman that needs to eat 180 grams of protein, let's say every day is what is ideal for you to build muscle, and you consistently only get 50 to 60 grams, and then all of a sudden the only thing you do different is you add these BCAAs you'll notice. into your routine, you'll notice yeah. it will help. But you would get the same or or better results adding a protein shake yes, every would. single day to that exact same scenario. So then to me, it's like, why do the, right. the, the branch chain amino acids? So, I mean, that's where it, I have such a hard time promoting a, a, a product like this. Next question is from Kirk Pata. Is it better to skip your workout if you're tired and get more sleep or push through it and get to the gym even though you're tired? If you're somebody that never misses a workout, then skip the workout and get some sleep. If you're somebody that consistently misses your workout, yeah. go to the gym and work out much easier. It's That's ba that's basically yeah. it. Now, why much easier? Because you're tired, yeah. right? Because you're tired, you don't get a good sleep. You could still go to the gym and get some benefit from doing an easy workout. But if you're like, like if you never miss a workout, you get a night of crappy sleep, you'll actually get more benefit in terms of muscle and fat loss and health and performance from taking that day off. Yeah, that covers the bases. I've had both types of clients. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah, I would have to say those, you know, depending on which one you were, that would be Yeah, it's whichever one you're more of a chronic, per are you more of a chronic bad sleeper or are you more of a chronic workout skipper? Yeah. If you're a chronic workout skipper, go to the fucking gym. Yeah. You need to go to the gym as much as you possibly can. You miss all the goddamn time. Yeah. If you are a chronic bad sleeper, then hey, maybe you're somebody who needs to get some better rest and put some emphasis on that because you'll get more results from going to the gym. I do always... Uh, go back to the conversation that we had with our friend, uh, Dr. Andy Galpin, when we did talk a, a little bit about this discussion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even that kind of changed a little bit of my perspective on the value of pushing through sometimes mm -hmm. in this. Sure. There is value. Optimizing. Yeah. And, and, yeah, learning to. Adapting or optimizing. That's right. Yeah. Adapting yeah. or optimizing. That's right. That was the case. Was talking about adapting or, or optimizing and stuff like that. And you're not always a, a for, you know, looking to optimize. Sometimes you're looking just to adapt and vice versa. And so there is some value in every once in a while when, yes, this is not the ideal time for me to train, but the ability to be able to push through when I don't feel good. And so that that has value to it too. So yeah. if it is something that was is rare and occasional, not a bad situation. But Mental if discipline there for right. sure. Yeah. Now to be just full disclosure, as a trainer, I, I never told my clients to skip a workout because then that meant I didn't have a session <laughs> to train them with. So when they would call me, not well, I'll just show up. And, and let's be honest, that's just true. 99% of the clients that uh, hired any of us needed accountability needed someone to yeah. tell them to go to the gym. And they weren't working out so and so yeah. I, did, I, I wasn't training right. one of the guys in the room right here that like I probably would tell, hey, go get, bro, you need sleep. Go get yeah. some sleep where, because you don't miss a lot of workouts. Your clients miss workouts all the time. Next question is from Kyle Saliba. Any tips on starting the process of getting into bodybuilding and competing? Yeah, I'll defer to you, Adam. This, what would you say to somebody who's like, hey, I want to get into bodybuilding competing. What would be some of the, I guess... Like, like cool maybe fires. milestones or things yeah. to focus on before doing that. Yeah, there's a, there's a, actually a lot, right? So first, I think it's really important that you have a really good relationship with exercise and nutrition, and it's not some form of uh, exaggerated form of body dysmorphia for you. Um, I would make the case and argument that most all of the best bodybuilders, and by the way, we have more and more of them that are speaking out. I do think it's because they hear it on Mind Pump and it's gotten around by now. Uh, but you have, you know, Mr. Olympia, eight time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath, talking about his, he still suffers today with body dysmorphia, right? Mm. And so even though we, there's so many people that admire and respect and look up and aspire to be like him, you don't want to be like him. He is he is he is tortured inside with body dysmorphia so bad that he's been able to chase eight trophies because of it. Like that's not a healthy relationship with exercise and diet. So first and foremost, I think you have to have a very good relationship with the quote unquote sport. And I know there's a community of people that hate for me to call it a sport because it's nothing like football or basketball or baseball. And I feel like I can do that because I've lived in both of those fields. It's like it is a, it's a sport in the sense that you have to be able to step out of it too and and put the ball down every once in a while and be okay with that and not suffer with this you know crippling body dysmorphia around oh my god I'm getting fat now or oh my god I, I missed a meal so I think that's first and foremost you need to have a very good relationship with your body and and what you're trying yeah, to because if call. you don't it's going to just 
amplify the hell out of what are just more right you. like if i got into bodybuilding in my 20s it would have been a very bad situation for me versus me getting into bodybuilding in my 30s when i would already worked through all of that stuff so i had a good relationship with that like i had a very clear vision of what i was trying to do i was trying i was trying to use it as a way to show people i knew the i knew what i was doing i right. knew what i was doing at the at the highest level so i could help build the business that we're we're running today i didn't have these these insecure issues about my body and that was feeding into that which is most people so i think you you need to you need to have that i also think you uh, should be honest with yourself if you're really trying to get into this sport you know and uh and if you want to be good at it it's like any other sport in this sense too that there's certain body types that are really made for it and others aren't doesn't mean you can't have a body type because i don't think i have a great body type for bodybuilding i still did it but you got to be able to look at yourself and be honest with yourself that i i'm am i a genetic freak like some of these bodybuilders which is how i easily could step away once i went pro i was like people were like oh you don't want to chase the olympia stage i'm like why like I'm not, I'm not made to be the guy who is number one on the Olympia stage. I, I proving I could go pro was enough for me. So be honest with yourself with w if you even have that body type. And then third is learning how to um, practice the the whole dieting process and getting yourself ready for stage before you ever get onto stage. So for about a year and a half. I was running like diet cycles to try and get myself into that shredded physique to what I would present on stage practicing. So you learn about your body, right? Yes. Like how, like where, how many calories I needed to cut, how much I needed to move. You know, if I cut this aggressively, did I lose muscle? Did I maintain? Did I get lean enough? Like, so I think practicing that before you put yourself in this like position where you have to be a certain before you don't stay. Yeah. What did you say? Also, make sure you have a pretty healthy metabolism before you do this. That would fall in the category of the, you know, like if practicing. you're only eating 1700 calories, yeah. you ain't going to do a 12 week pre, you know, that's right. That's that comes into with the, the practicing the, the cut, like you, you'll see a lot of people that, and this is even more common on the uh, women's bikini. You see this a lot where coaches will just put, women on, on ungodly yeah, amounts calories, of calories. cardio yeah. and low, low calorie and just destroy um, their their hormone profile. So be very careful and understand that too. Like when you go into cut for a show, you want to be at the highest calorie intake you've ever been in your life. You want to be eating a lot of calories because you got a long ways to go. Even if you're relatively lean to get shredded for a stage, you're going to have to do several calorie restricting calorie cuts to get there and you want to be able to plan like, okay, if I go down, you know, 500 here, 500 here, 500 here, 500 here, what am I left with? And is that a healthy place for me to be very long? And if it's not, I better not be in there for a very long period of time, meaning weeks or months at a time just to get to that body fat percentage. So keep that in mind too. Right. Look, if you like mind pump, you can get a workout set up for you every single week for under $5 a month. Go to Instagram, mind pump media, subscribe, under $5 a month, you get all that. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 